People all across Ulster are working hard to develop and grow the game of hurling in the province. New hurling units are growing with new clubs being formed, established GAA clubs introducing underage hurling in their clubs and clubs amalgamating to participate in hurling competitions. It is vital for the game to survive and grow in Ulster that this trend continues and we get more clubs participating and more people playing our national game. One club where hurling is thriving is Dunlow. On Sunday the 27th of September, Dunlow lost the Donegal Junior Final to Carndona on a scoreline of 213 to 211. Both clubs deserve great credit for the work they have done over the past number of years to get hurling in their respective clubs to the point where they are competing at adult level. Cormac Hartnett, a Cork native who now resides in the area, was instrumental to and the driving force behind the development of hurling in Dunlow. Cormac has kindly agreed to share some of his experiences on the development of the game in the club. Um, and it started off on a, on a, a very tiny basis. I, I have two sons who, are, who were six and seven at the time. Um, they were forever pucking around the house with me. And, uh, you know, we always had spare hurlies at the house and, you know, one or two of their friends would pick up hurlies from time to time um, and puck around with them. So slowly it, 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 it extended from the three Hartnets to maybe three Hartnets and two or three friends. And then what we did was just entered a, a, a five-a-side indoor competition that was organized by, I think, either Johnny Gall GA or Ulster GA. And they happen every winter um, with frequency. So we went to Letterkenny, ended up playing about five or six games with five or six players only. Um, but they loved it. That was their first introduction to, to competitive hurling. And uh, it stuck with them. And it just goes to show that, you know, you, you, you get uh, a small number of people, you put them together in a team, you go and you play these small-sided competitions that are especially organised for, you know, groups uh, at an indoor level, groups that are starting off new, and uh, they love the experience, and then you, you, you take it from there. Uh, generally speaking, we would now compete uh, at every age group. Um, so from 8s, 10s, 12s, 14s, uh, 16s, minors, 21s, and this year for the first year, uh, a senior team. So that's brilliant. I mean, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, we have probably about 9 or 10 coaches. Um, it's still thin, um, and you know it's something that you'd hope to increase as, as we move along. Um, so it, it's great to be at a stage where you can actually make that number of teams function. Um, but are we there in terms of player numbers? Are we there in terms of, of coaches? No, we're not. Um, but our profile is increasing and um, our social media presence is increasing. And that's something that has really helped us. Um, we got somebody involved this year uh, who took charge of social media. And uh, that certainly um, worked well in terms of new children, new players at adult level even, and uh, new people willing to, as I say, stick their hand up and, and, and to help. So hurling in Dunlow at the moment, um, it, it, it's certainly healthy. And, um, so generally speaking, uh, in the years that have gone by, um, if neither of us are able to feel a team in our own right, uh, then we would amalgamate. So there's been um, plenty of amalgamations between the two clubs. And then in other years where Dunlow might have more numbers, um, what happens is that the Goudot players get regularised into the Dunlow team. And that, more often than not, is the situation. But it was reversed one year where Dunlow didn't have enough players and we were regularised into a Goudot team. So there's a great relationship there. We help each other out. When neither can field, uh, we amalgamate together. Otherwise, uh, if there aren't enough uh, Goudot players for an amalgamation, they get regularised into Dunlow. And I should say that's also a situation with Nick Murray Club, another local club where we always have three or four players uh, from that club uh, throughout the age groups, and they also get regularized into the, uh, the Dunlow team as well. Um, you know, there's, there's no tradition of it, or, there, or at least there wasn't. Although I always say to people, and I always said it through the years as well, we now have one year's tradition or two years tradition or three years tradition. Now we have 13 years tradition, so we have tradition. But in, in those early times, you know, you have to be prepared to be patient and just to persevere. Um, you know, you're going to have training sessions with five and six and seven or eight kids, sometimes even less than that. Uh, you're going to have uh, little numbers, little coaching support, little club structure. 
Um, so they're all the challenges, but little is key um, because um, you have to work with little and making sure they're having fun and making sure they have plenty of games, being prepared to, to travel um, establishing, you know, links with other clubs um, um, using your, your neighboring clubs, such as Ghidorah, as I've mentioned previously, and slowly building step by step upon that. So like the, the, the club school link is, is, is massively important. Uh, in terms of having, uh, you know, a twin track approach to it. So if you can move on a little bit in club, and then you can start it in, in school and move on a little bit there, then you know suddenly the the two merge and you've got a far stronger situation. But you know, people are, I suppose, always a little bit suspicious of what's new. So when you introduce something that's new um, into a very proud and well-established football club, you know, there's always going to be a certain number of people who are suspicious of it because they're going to think that, well, is this going to interfere with football? And I think, you know, when you're the new kid on the block or the, the person with the new uh, sport or the person with the new idea, you know, you have to move slowly and you have to be respectful of the status quo. Uh, it is a football club and you're stepping into that arena. So you can't just barge in. Uh, you have to go slowly. Um, you have to move slowly. Um, you have to be determined um, and stick with your, your, you know, your, your beliefs. But at the same time, you have to accept as well that you're the, the, the minority um, and you are the, the person who's you know, trying to gain the trust of a club. Um, and therefore, you, know, you have to be respectful of those traditions. So it does take time. It's a slow burn and you're not going to create a healthy, strong hurling club in a year or two or maybe not even three. Um, but you know, if you're willing to sort of move from little and move at a slow pace, gain the respect of players, parents, and the club, then you get traction. Highlights in themselves are obviously progress. So, you know, when you get an under-8 team, and then that develops into an under-10 team, and then you've got an under-8 and an under-10 team, um, and so forth and so on, you know, that's massive progress. So, you know, progress is measured in lots of different things. So when you see increased players, when you see a parent who suddenly puts up their hand and is willing to help you out, or you, you get a, a principal in a school who thinks that hurling is great, or that you've, you know, you've, you've impressed upon him sufficiently that he's going to give it a go for six or 10 weeks. So when you see all of those little things widening the, the, the net uh, of, of potential players and uh, coaches, um, that's really satisfying because then you know that people are listening and that they believe uh, to a certain extent in what you're, you're, you're saying and what you're preaching. Um, so that's very satisfying and that's what it's all about. Because at the end of the day, it's about creating um, you know, enough people uh, to make itself sufficient so that when you step aside, that it carries on by itself. Very satisfying as well to see lots of um, lads make county squads, lots of lads to get on development squads, um, you know, lads um, really progressing individually. Um, and then I suppose in terms of, of games and winning games, we our first breakthrough came through um, with our under-14 team in 2014, I think it was. And uh, we won the under-14 B championship that year. So that was the first um, victory that we ever had uh, in, a, in, a, in an age group. Um, but it, it had a huge effect. So, you know, at the end of the day, lads love winning. Um, and that really sort of gelled that cohort of 20 odd lads um, and I would say seven years later out of those 20 lads probably 13 or 14 of them are still playing hurling. Now the competition itself started in 2019 um, we didn't have another team in 2019 um, we had a 21 team uh, in 2019 and they got to the division one Final. That was the, the, the basis then of us deciding to, to field an adult team. Um, now we knew there was probably a certain number of, of fellas uh, who, in the area um, who would play hurling, who hadn't played maybe in a couple of years or longer, um, who would throw their weight behind an adult team. So we entered it this year. Um, no, look, we knew we had a, a strong backbone in terms of our under 21s, but um, you know, we did at the same time um, regarded as a, um, something that we would dip our toe into and see how we get on. But it went very, very well and uh, you know, we 
we topped our group and uh, we won our semi-final and we got to the final. So unfortunate that we, we couldn't finish it. Um, it was a very tight game. Uh, it could have gone either way. Um, but Karen Donna uh, had it on the day and deserved it. Um, so as our first year, fantastic. Great to field an adult team. Great to see the structure uh, that an adult team needs uh, be put into place. Um, you know, sponsors coming on board, um, great enthusiasm, um, great momentum. And, uh, you know, that carried us all the way through the season, short as it was, uh, to the county final. And, uh, you know, that's where, we, uh, that's where we ended up. So, fantastic. You know, we were really, really pleased uh, with our, our, our first year into adult turning. Aspects, you, you have to realise that, you know, little is your strength. Um, so, work with little. So, find out uh, what your core group is and look after them, you know, give them lots of time, give them lots of games, um, make sure they're enjoying themselves, having fun at whatever age group that is, and work then uh, to try and expand upon that. Um, absolutely get involved with your primary schools and your national schools. But starting off, you have to accept, you know, if you are one or two people trying to start this movement, th there's going to be a lot of time involved, and there's going to be a lot of commitment involved. You're going to have to be very patient. Um, you're going to have to be respectful of the existing structure if it's a football club that you're, you're, you're trying to introduce hurling into. Um, you're going to have to realise that you're the, the small fish in the pool um, and you're just going to have to try and work your way through that. But like, there's plenty of help out there and, and one of the keys is make sure you ask for it. Um, you know, we've had so many different coaches come down to Dunlow simply because we asked. Um, everybody in Dunlow Club, bar a couple of us, be they players, be they mentors, be they coaches, has no tradition in hurling. But by God, they're passionate about it now. You know, they love it now. Um, and as I say, they've got 13 years tradition in Dunlow at the moment. So you create your own tradition, you create your own history, You, but you start small and you just keep chipping away and you keep chipping away and it is a slow burn and it will take time. But um, while we're not there yet, uh, we're definitely at a point where it's almost self-sufficient, I would say. And that's after, you know, 13 years or so. But it's it's been tough. I mean, there's been times where you would literally want to throw your hat at it and say, I can't do this. You know, nobody's, nobody really wants me here. Nobody wants to support me. I'm dealing with small numbers of kids. I'm dealing with, you know, hidings at, at every game we go to. Uh, we can't field an outdoor team. But so what? That's the start. So yeah, it, it looks good. Um, as I said previously, you know, we're certainly not there yet. And we're not an established hurling club as of yet, but we're almost there. Um, you know, over the last number of years, we've competed at under 21, minor, under 16, and this year, junior, um, Division One finals. Um, we've got a club hurling officer within the club, which I think is an important thing to get. So in your club structure, uh, if you can get somebody to become the hurling officer, um, it just gives official recognition within your club to hurling. Um, somebody then has the interest of hurling at, at, at meetings, because with the best will in the world, if you're not at those club meetings uh, or somebody's not there representing hurling, then you know it, it doesn't get mentioned. Why would it? Um, it's something that's new. So you have to be there to bang the drum um, for your, your, your own part of the club. The future definitely looks good, um, but you know, you always have to sort of keep your eye on the ball. In 13 years, um, you know, we have now gone from a position of no hurling teams to probably six or seven hurling teams, which is fantastic. Um. Hurling is a fantastic sport. All children in Ireland should have an opportunity to play and to enjoy the game. It is up to GA clubs and the Gales involved with the clubs to provide the children with this opportunity. Dunglow are a great example to all developing hurling clubs across Ireland at present. With patience, perseverance, commitment and support, it is possible to establish hurling and see the game flourish. If any club or club member is interested in starting hurling in their area, they should contact any member of the Ulster Hurling Development Team. There is support available to anyone who wants or needs it. We look forward to seeing the game continue to grow over the coming years.